You gotta make this putt to win the skins. Don't blow it. Come on, focus, son. Yeah, remember that time in Little League when you walked in the winning run? Yeah, you embarrassed me then, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna embarrass me now. Connor, you're a terrible salesman. You missed this putt and you're fired. Connor, you're four feet away from this hole, but sexually, you're four miles away from me. I need to explore. I'm a sexual being. You want to make out? Hell yeah. If you're having sex with somebody else, just tell me. Who's he Is it Gary? Who are you talking to? Who? What? You just missed that putt. <laughs> oh. What an idiot, dude. I mean, I, I like cash. Boy, swag. Swag, don't cash at me, don't Venmo me, <laughs> like, all right? I yeah. want my real money. Venmo's fine. All right, here it is, folks. Um, I shot an 85. Alice. 89. Thank you. Go ahead, Thank Alice. You. Uh, Randall, you got a 97. And our winner, again, with an 83, <laughs> Wilson, who will be buying the drinks. For myself. Oh. <laughs> hey, Peter, you said I shot a 97? Yeah, 97. Uh, let me see. Oh, you got me down for a 7 on the first hole. I got a 5. No, your tee shot went to water. Uh, drop 2, hit 3, back into the water. Uh, drop 4, hit 5 on, and then... You two putted. Seven. How do you remember what I shot on the first hole? Oh, because you said, and I quote, I can't believe it's the first hole and I'm in the water twice. <laughs> I never said that. Can't believe it's the first hole and I already went in the water twice. All right, well, what about seven? You got me down for a double bogey? I got a par on that. Dude, you played most of the seventh hole down the ninth fairway. Do you think you parted? So I guess that putt wasn't a gimme? I'm sorry, which, which, which putt are you thinking about? The 20-footer that was 10 feet short or the 10-footer that blew past the hole? All right, well, what about 12? You mean the hole that you hit it out of bounds, took a drop, and then hit a cart girl in the head twice? Uh, technically, it ricocheted off a man-made object, so I shouldn't get a stroke for that. Well, you still should call the hospital and make sure she's okay. I'm pretty sure she's fine. She had thick hair. Wait a minute, why is there an X on 14 for me? Because after your third try of hitting out the bunker, you looked at the ball and said, since you like the beach so much, go visit the ocean, and you threw the ball in the lake. You don't remember this? I did? You did. You like the beach so much, why don't you go to the ocean? If you don't remember that, I'm assuming you don't remember what happened on 17. 17. I got a birdie. No, the hell you didn't! Or you just kind of just kicked the ball around. Oh, that's why you drew a foot there for my score. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Well, hold on. 18? I got a par on 18. My man, you started with a white ball, you ended with a pink ball, and your left foot is covered in fresh mud. So I'm going to go with you didn't get a par. OK. But I mean, you're giving me a 97. I got me down for an 81. Oh, there we go. God! Who won is. the bet? I said 86. <laughs> I got him in an 83. 75. And you know that we play Price is Right rules, so it's closest Damn without it. going oh, over. Pay up. Wait, 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 wait. Pay what up. are we betting on here? Let's go. Come on. OK, Cash I got an 83. Up. 83. I, I yeah. think I. Yeah, yeah. sure. Hang uh -huh. on. Uh -huh. Let me get a pencil. Yeah. How about 86, because we're out? That is going to trick us every week. 84. My bad. 84. And now, thoughts from the green. They say if you can kill two birds with one stone, it means you're efficient. But it also means you're an asshole. Here's a better idea. Zero stones and zero birds. Stop killing birds. Read a book. And that was Thoughts from the Green. Potatoes. I know what you're thinking. An Irish man and potatoes. Where's the Italian saying that's a spicy meatball? <laughs> But I'm not here to spit spontaneous stories about said spuds, all right? I've only got two minutes. For the better part of 10 years, there's been a problem in golf, and it goes by the name of... Mashed potato! Mashed potato! Mashed potato! <laughs> That's right. You say mashed potatoes, and I say you're a loser. 
I mean, to understand this absolute plague upon the game, we travel back to 2011 when a guy named Andrew Kidmar came up with a moronic idea. He told his mother to watch Tiger Woods tee off on the 18th hole of the Chevron World Challenge because he was going to yell out in order to say hello. This is an actual true story. I mean, it happened, it took off, we fact-checked it, honestly. <laughs> Look, there are obviously more efficient ways to say hello to your mother. The telephone, texting, email, perhaps a fax, hire a skywriter. You could even climb the stairs of your basement that you live in and say, hey, mom. <laughs> Anything would have been better than this failure of a heckle, and thanks to this fella, we have been bombarded with... <laughs> Which spawned and, and, and Daddy didn't love me, so I yell out in the hopes of someone show me affection. <laughs> Anyone? Please, I'm a loser. <laughs> Look, if you're ever lucky enough to attend a professional golf event, just do what most people do: stand in awe of these amazing athletes, politely clap, and most importantly, shut the. F up. And that has been my two cents in two minutes. It's probably less than two minutes, is it? Yeah. I'm good at this. <laughs> what the f is matcha? All right, it's not every day that we get a real, real golf legend on this show. So it is my distinct pleasure to welcome to the show six-time major winner, Sir Nick Faldo. Welcome. Hey, good to see you, my friend. Yeah, how are you? Where are you? I'm, uh, I'm in Dublin. Where are you? Oh, don't look like you're in Dublin. I'm not in Dublin. No, I'm in Montana. This is the new home. We've been up here about 10 days now. Uh, this is the whole new world, the whole new project we're building down in Bozeman, or just outside of Bozeman, along the valley, calling it Faldo Farm, becoming a, become a farmer. You how, did know. You, how did you come up with the name? <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Animals. <laughs> and flowers. It could be Faldo Flower Farm as well. You never know. And Fleur, Fleur de Faldo. So there was, <laughs> there was a few connotations. So we'll start with your most recent moment in your career that went viral, your emotional retirement from broadcasting. Means I'm a single child and I've found at 65 three brothers. Thank you. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> How do you put into words leaving the booth after 16 years? There's always some deep-rooted stuff in there that just freaking came out, a bit embarrassing. But, but you know, the, 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 the genuine love from those guys... Um, you know, we we really came together through COVID. By creating the COVID Tower, um, where it was a studio, we're in Arnold Palmer's studio at the Golf Channel there, we suddenly, I said, no, stick everybody in front of us so we can all look at each other. And it really helped. And I remember talking about um, KJ Choi and, and, and then Frank's doing squats because he used to be you know, a great, he was a, a weightlifter. So, so you're able to pick it. And if you start floundering on finishing sentence like I normally do you know I can see Ian going and I go and Ian's got more on this and so we, we were literally throwing it to each so they really have become brothers to me now because they I've known them all for moments especially Ian I've known Ian for freaking hell we're getting close to 40 years now so um I was touched by the love that I got from from the gang yeah and you were famously stoic throughout your golf career you did not show a lot of emotion on the golf course so how did you end up going from that to a lead TV analyst Back in that era, that time, it was very much keep your cards close to your chest. You know, my dad said to me, you remember Eric Bristow, you know, darts? Yeah, yeah. When we used to have those, that, yeah. He said to me, when he plays for England, he doesn't stay in the hotel um, because he says the day the other players know, know about me, know who I am, it's the day they will beat me. So it's little things like that register yeah. anything. So I don't want to give away my who I am. You had to win to change your lifestyle. You really did. You know, what was the prize money? You know, I found a leaflet when the European tour became the European tour, you know, back in like early 80s, how excited they were to go to 10 million pounds for the tour. 
And so I won five tournaments in 1983 and won £100,000. I was the first one to go over 100000 I won five times for that. Work it out. So if you want to change your life, you had to win. So you must have been a natural athlete. You picked up golf when you were 14 years old and you turned pro when you were 18. Well, I love sport. I was, I was good at everything. But it was really the practice that is, is the real part, you know, isn't it? Swimming, my goodness. After you've, When you go and do those blooming three-mile-a-day blooming things, I'm like, I had enough of that. That's, that was no fun. So I then watched the Masters. Uh, you know, 1971, and Jack didn't win, but he was obviously the one. So it's a good old BBC, um, you know, being beamed over from CBS. So it's funny how that was a circle, isn't it? And so, hey, that was how I started. I said, oh, well, there's, a go- there's a sport. I want to try that. And I literally went to mum and, uh, and dad's, hey, I want to try this golf. What do, we, what do we do? I said, well, we've got a golf course the other side of town. And they drove me over. And that was it. I went in the pro shop and said, well, I'd like to, how do I start? And I said, well, you get, and the, the assistant's name was, was Chris Arnold, and I booked six lessons. Within a year, I'd fallen in love with it. So I'm 14 years old when I played, and then 15, I said, made the decision I want to be a pro golfer. 16, I left school, and then by the time I was 18, I was the with Sandy Lyle, I was the best in the country. Then I turned pro pretty much after. I turned pro just before I was 19. Wow. And then and by 20, I'm playing in the Ryder Cup against Jack. So in six years, you went from picking up a golf club to playing in a Ryder Cup. Six years. And beating Jack. And beat Watson. Watson was the open right. champion. I beat, cool. beat him. We played three matches that year, and I won all three matches. So how about that? Six years. What was your most memorable Ryder Cup win? Muirfield, 87, of course. When we, the first time we won in America. That was, the whole atmosphere was unbelievable. You know, we had, we had 2,000 fans to their 20,000, and our 2,000 out sang their 20,000. And so the golf was fantastic. We outplayed America and outputted them on Jack Screens. And, you know, and then other good ones, your Valderrama with Seve as captain. What was Seve like as a captain? Oh, <laughs> so that's my. So on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, Seve says, you know, I just, actually, I'm going to try my accents. But, he says, you know, I just want you to relax, have a good time, you know, just play, enjoy your golf, you know, it's no problem, just relax and just, let's just see what happens, you know. So then Saturday night, we go, see, so by Saturday night, we have to win, you know. <laughs> yeah, he goes, we have to win. He says, I don't want you to three putt, and don't want you to hit in the bunkers, and don't hit in the trees on right of 16. And we're like, oh, my God, Seve, you know, you're just painting pictures like, Living under Seve's wing for that week was, was really special, really, really, really fun. So it all came out in the wash in the end. So we won, and that was that was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah, speaking of a younger Nick Faldo, when you came on the scene, you did look like this. My question is, what size bowl did you use to cut your hair? That was, well, it was Fortnum and Masons. It was my mum's pudding bowls from Fortnum and Masons, very posh. <laughs> she had one bowl from Fortnum and Masons. I think they went there once, but, you know, and... Exactly. It was, it was literally put on my head and cut. It, and it just, it, I mean, we looked horrendous, didn't we? So you're one of the few guys that get to attend both the Masters Champions Dinner and the Open Champions Dinner. Which one is better and why? Um, well, completely different. I mean, the Masters is special because it really is just the champions and the chairman. That is it. So we have a little glass of wine on the front balcony to start the evening. Then we moved to the back room which is laid up just a one big giant table and um, we have the photograph done and then we all sit and I sit in the southern hemisphere corner and it's fun you resurrect all the old stories so that's very special and then the open was obviously very special because you're back at St Andrews once every mm-hmm. you know five years very historic it was great um, they gave us a wonderful medal this year so you know when you win the open you get a medal. So they gave us a medal to commemorate. So there was only 13, eight of those medals cast. So little things like that, the history of St. Andrews, of course, is fabulous. Hey, I, I'm, I'm not going to chew that. They're so far apart. that, they're, that As I said, I'm very fortunate. There's two wonderful spots to win uh, majors. So you only have an open champions dinner when the open is at St. Andrews. Only when we go to St. Andrews. So that makes it obviously makes very it special. special. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, once yeah, every yeah. Five, basically five years or so. Yeah. 
we just recently lost a legend in Tom Weiskopf. What did he mean to you? He was a great inspiration to me. It was my first Open when I went to uh, Troon, 73, and watched him. And, you know, and then I played with him at Walton Heath, and he waded in the, the fescue this deep, and he hit this two iron out, two iron out the, out the, and I can still hear it today. Isn't that great? You can still hear the crunch. It was like, holy crap, how did he do that? That man could strike a golf ball. So tell me, what's it like to be knighted? And what's the coolest thing about being knighted? Well, the particular day is amazing. It's so unbelievably British, you can imagine. I was fortunate. My investiture was at Windsor Castle. And they do such a wonderful job. And you've got com Commodores, you know, all beautifully dressed. And they walk you through the proceedings. And it's just so wonderfully British. So... Um, Dying to ask, which is not the done thing, dying to ask, imagine, you know, how, 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 old, how old is the sword? You know, and that sword is a couple of hundred years old. So you imagine how many shoulders that's been on. So that's a kind of a very cool thing. Now I have to teach America because they say Safaldo. Welcome up here, Safaldo, to the hotel. And I said, no, if you want to say it, it's a nip. You know, it's a lot nicer and, and warmer. So you've had two incredible careers, one in golf and one in broadcasting. So now that you're retired, what's next for Sir Nick Fallow? Yeah, what well, next? Do you know, I really want to, um, really want to read. We're going to relaunch Fowler Design. That's my next goal to leave a really great golf course, put a really great golf course in the ground because you know I've seen enough. You got to get the blend just right. You can't make them ridiculous, um, but you want guys to go. Ooh, got to do this, got to do that, mustn't do this, mustn't do that. Now that's that's probably about the way to describe it. You know? Sir Nick, thank you so, so much for coming on the show. It's a huge honour to have you. Uh, very generous with your time and with your stories. Go, enjoy <laughs> your fishing, reel them in. Sir Nick Faldo. All right, good to see you. <laughs>